The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining this webinar uh, called Pre-Drill Your Well to Ensure Hazard and NPT-Free and Optimized Drilling Operations. My name is Kenza, I'm the Regional Sales Manager, EMEA for eDrilling, and I'm here today with Morten Svensson, the VP of Product Management and Strategy. So this is the agenda of this webinar. I would like to start with an overview of the current challenges when it comes to the preparation phase before drilling a well. Moving on to talk more about WellSim, the eDrilling simulator, and what it can provide in this preparation phase. We will then show some examples of uh, different drilling scenarios where the simulator has been used. Following that, we will highlight the benefits of uh, pre-drilling a well in simulator. Uh, we will then conclude before moving to the Q&A session. And about that, uh, you can at any time write your questions on the Q&A tab you will find on the GoToWebinar application, uh, and we will answer them at the end of this uh, session. So let me start by asking the question that any of you may be asking me, why do I need to use a simulator? And to answer that, I see uh, three main challenges that could be addressed by using an advanced drilling simulator. First one is having a competent crew who has been well trained. In addition to the competency and the training, the crews need to be ready to perform uh, this specific operation we have planned. And as you know, no wells are similar, so even if you have drilled a well nearby, you might encounter situations that are different to the previous ones. So pre-drilling your well, uh, your own well, uh, your own upcoming well is a tight change uh, from training on generic scenarios. Another challenge is the time taken in the rig for testing new equipment or method. And that can be done in some cases onshore using the simulator. I would like now to talk um, more about the WellSim. Uh, WellSim is the e-drilling simulator for engineering and training of all well engineering disciplines. By improving insight and understanding of dynamic well behavior, it has actually the potential to change the ways you plan and drill your wells. It is the most advanced downhole simulator using artificial intelligence and the e-drilling digital twin to give a digital representation of the well. It includes dynamic ROP model, a coupled flow and talk and drag model, it shows the time development of the operations and take into account uh, dynamic effects like inertia, acceleration, and rotation, and also the effects of temperature and pressure changes on the downhole process. Um, also, a reservoir model is embedded in the multi-phase hydraulic model for realistic influx behavior. And the simulator models dissolved and free gas behavior uh, free gas um, during well control situations. The token drag model includes an ROP model for realistic ROP related to weight on bits based on formation uh, and bits properties. Um, well sim also can be delivered with multiple, multiple front end uh, applications. We have well sim hydrant. It includes a topside rig floor uh, simulator, Hydrill, from our partner Oiltech Solutions. And it is dynamically uh, coupled to our WellSim downhole simulator, providing a simulator with a unique realism and capability uh, far ahead of anything else available on the market today. We also have WellSim Interact, uh, which is an interactive de desktop application for uh, running dynamic simulations, and WellSim third party, uh, which is the WellSim API that can interface to any third party topside drilling simulator. More about uh, WellSim and the gain you can have by pre-drilling your well in simulator. 
by using a digital twin, Wellsim provides a platform to ensure safe, effective, and efficient well delivery for any planned well by acquiring skills and experience on the specific well. Typical well-specific scenarios include uh, early, uh, early detection of stack pipe, loss circulation, kick, hot cleaning, or well bore stability. Another thing is that multidisciplinary teams can study the dynamic well behavior for details of the plan. And verify, sorry, uh, another thing is that multidisciplinary teams can study the dynamic well behavior uh, for details of the plan and verify that plans and procedures are optimal and safe. So effectively, this can replace the old drill well on paper exercise. Also, the risk elements can be peer run in the simulator and the teams can train on potential downhole events and equipment failure occurring during critical operations. And as I mentioned earlier, you can also use it to test new equipment or procedures on shore prior to the operation, saving then rig time and cost. So over to you now, Morten, with uh, some examples. Yeah, we have uh, done some examples here to just to kind of talk a bit about uh, what kind of different operations you can uh, use in the simulator. Uh, we had quite a few examples when it comes to HBHT. And some, we have done a lot for Equinor, both on Gudrun, King Lear, and Valemon, but also Total, uh, and also other examples. So the challenge is very often uh, in HBHT, the, the, the different wells uh, that you do, that you have high temperature that is affecting the fluid properties. And it's not that many wells that's, that's actually HBS, HB that is drilled. That means that there is very little experience around this area. And a typical thing for the scenarios or the, 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 the wells that we have been involved in, that there has also been some uncertainties about the pressures. So what we do have done on the different uh, wells or operations we have been involved in is that we have made built the actual well in the simulator uh, to demonstrate and train to understand the temperature effects on the fluid system. And when I say the actual well, it's it's an actual digital copy of the well that is going to be drilled with all the information you know about it. So you will actually have the familiarization when you go out and offshore and do the operations afterwards. It's very, in several of the operations we also used, uh, there's a lot of well control in, in, in the HPHT training or preparations that we have done. Uh, and one example is a high pressure reservoir with a very low MASP. We have also done a few times actually with severe losses that was leading to underground blowout, which has been uh, an eye opener for a lot of the teams that's been in simulator. So the outcome come from training or preparing using the, the simulator in HPHG operations is that you have been able to make sure that teams are ready to drill the upcoming wells with the associated risks. There has been a very high focus on procedures and especially on well control to make sure that everybody understands how, how that works, but also to understand the barriers well control methods and when to use them. We also have quite a few examples from managed pressure drilling operations. Uh, a lot from Equinor on Gudrun, Gulfax, and Kvitebjørn, but also with Shell on the Shearwater, but also with Talisman. So the challenge is, normally challenges in managed pressure drilling is that you have uh, a, a well with very narrow margins. Uh, that, that might even mean that the well ha has not been able to be drilling without the technology. And you're also adding new technology in the operations. You're changing the way you are 
working on the well, which is also a challenge to understand how the technology is affecting the operation. And you very often end up having extra crew members from the MPD service companies. Uh, with a big uh, and a big problem or, a, or issue there is to make sure the communication is uh, working, but also that everybody involved in the operations have control of the roles and responsibilities to make sure that you you, you do the operation safe. And in this in these MPD trainings, we did have done exactly the same as with the HPHD. We have the actual well in the simulator with the associated risks. Uh, we have also an interface so the MPD service companies can connect their MPD control system to the system, to the simulator. That means that you are able to train the MPD provider on their own equipment together with the, the drilling team and the rest of the, the crew involved in operation. Uh, in managed pressure drilling preparation, there has also been a big focus on procedures, especially on the special procedures of general operation in a managed pressure drilling mode, but also all the contingency procedures that is necessary to have control of if something happens or when something might happen. There, we also have a big focus on the communication, training on how to do the communication over radio and so on to make sure that everybody had control of that. The outcome here was that there was, a, of course, all involved parties in the operation had a big awareness of the risks connected to the actual well, but also understanding the procedures and responsibilities. And one of the other good things is that we actually reduced the offshore training a lot. That means that it saved a lot of rig time to actually move a lot of the training into a safe simulator environment instead of do the training on the rig. We have some examples from, from, from this year actually on, on shallow gas operations or, or drilling wells with uh, shallow gas reservoirs. Uh, we have some examples from Equinor with uh, the Copjell, but also for, with Spirit Energy or the Scare, Scarecrow uh, well that it drilled this year. So the challenge here is that there was a risk of a shallow gas reservoir. In, in both these cases, they were not sure if that was uh, uh, correct, but there was a high risk of a ha shallow gas reservoir. Uh, one of the companies had had a swap kick in a similar well earlier, uh, leading to uh, a major well control incident. You also have, in both these cases, tight margins with a very low mass. This means that you, you there is a high potential for something uh, for, for actually, if it's possible to drill the well, uh, at least. And now, again, the uncertainty of the pressure. And in, in both these cases, we, we put the actual well in the simulator with the associated risks. And, um, and, and uh, we kind of had different scenarios around the, the problem with the shallow gas reservoir. Um, this was uh, very similar to what we the, uh, Equinor had uh, experienced earlier by having a shallow gas reservoir with a low pressure, but was causing uh, swabbing uh, while pulling out the pole after reaching TD. But also drilling into a high pressure reservoir in a shallow uh, zone, uh, and also other problems around. Uh, pack offs, which will also lead to um, swapping later on. Uh, the outcome of this is that the crew members were prepared for the upcoming operation, of course, but they also understood the challenges associated with the shallow gas and being prepared to uh, take action if there was any sign on uh, anything happening. So the there was a very big focus in the training, but also afterwards on early detection, volume control, but as well also tripping speed. Instead of just having uh, a normal uh, trip speed calculations, they had a bigger focus on getting accurate tripping speed calculations up front to, to trip more safely. Uh, this was just uh, a few examples of what we have done 
But uh, we have actually done, we have had more than 5,000 participants in the team training simulator environments. And to be able to do that, we have pre pre prepared more than 150 well specific scenarios. Uh, and they are all built around actual wells that, they have been, that has been planned to drill with all the risks associated. And as you can see from the list, it's uh, everything from conventional drilling, managed pressure drilling, HBHD, extended reach drilling, deep water wells, um, all kind of different uh, operations. And you can also see on the right side here that the, the, the customer base or the different companies that has been in the simulator is also a big number. All these 5,000 participants is in the simulators that we have in the training center here in, in Norway. But the simulator is also available at other locations and also some of the customers own their own simulator that they have bought from us. All right, thanks Morten for uh, these examples. Uh, before moving to the conclusion, I would like to mention one uh, of the benefits of pre-drilling your well in simulator is that you can uh, actually also use it, uh, use the e-drilling uh, digital twin technologies throughout the well life cycle. You can take the same well, the digital twin of your well, and use it during the operation for uh, real-time optimization and automated monitoring. Um, in real-time operation, it enables you to do uh, forward simulations and what-if simulations to detect mismatch and give input to change drilling plan, for example, to avoid problems or uh, to change parameters uh, and to have optimal drilling. You can also use the digital twin uh, after the operation for post-analysis and experience transfer. And of course, uh, the digital twin of the well can also be used in planning phase uh, to optimize the uh, drilling plans. So, as you can see, uh, this treats the well life cycle as one continuous process. Uh, the model of the well from planning uh, software seamlessly transfers between solutions from planning and design, training, real-time operation, and also after the operations for post-analysis and experience transfer using um, the same model or digital twin throughout the well life cycle. And we have uh, actually done a research on over uh, 60 wells where e-drilling digital twin technologies were used, either in uh, preparation for well, uh, 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 for well drilling as well as we talked about, or during operations doing real-time optimization or automated monitoring. And what we found out is that all these wells had no hazardous incidents and no uh, side tracks. So to conclude, by pre-drilling your well in simulator, you can avoid NPT by having a better decision support in planning and operations. You can improve risk management both by simulating risk areas and having a better risk visibility. And you can uh, optimize operational performance by controlling the drilling parameters, verifying procedures, testing technical limits, and having uh, interactive scenario simulations. So this uh, ends our presentation. Thank you all for listening. We can uh, now open uh, the floor to the Q&A session. Um, I would like to remind you that you can write your questions in the Q&A tab. You will find the, in the GoToWebinar application. Um, also, um, uh, yeah, I think uh, we're ready to, to take the first uh, question. Yeah. How is a simulator training usually conducted? Guided workshop with e-drilling trainers? How long does it usually take to prepare for it? including gathering data to build a digital twin. Yeah, so the simulator training is usually conducted uh, as a way uh, where uh, it's kind of a, like a workshop. It depends a bit on the different operations and uh, what the customer actually wants us to do. It can be as a part of a HPHD workshop, but it could also be a, a, a training session directly based on the risks and operations they're going to do. 
typically in one training day, we are able to run three and maybe up to four different scenarios uh, based on the risks that is associated with the well. So the, you have the drilling team, the, the driller is driller, you have the assistant driller doing his work, you have the, the different other parts of the team involved and observing the operation and joining in when something happens and make the decisions together on how to solve the problems. And how long it, does it usually take to prepare for it? Yes, uh, that is a really good question. Uh, it really depends on the data quality that's available from the customer. Uh, usually, we would like we would like to get the data as early as possible before the training itself. But we usually spend around a week to build the scenarios and verify them together with the instructor and make sure they are working properly. And then we might also run uh, some uh, demonstration or go through together with the customer uh, to, to make sure that it's, it's within their needs and expectations. And uh, yeah, uh, we don't have e-drilling trainers or instructors. We are relying on our partners to do this. Uh, we are working very closely to MERSC training which is conducting the training sessions that we do for our customers. All right. Um, we have another question. Can the simulator be set up in the rig? Yes, it can. Uh, we have actually a portable simulator that can be used in the rig. And you can also use the WebSim Interact, uh, which I talked about. Uh, and which has a simple surface interface, uh, but the, the same downhole simulate, uh, simulation uh, software as you would have in other simulators. Um, the next question, um, can multiple simulations be run at the same time? Well, uh, when doing a pre-drilling simulator, we are actually running only one scenario or one section at a time. Uh, but when, if you use uh, WellSim Interact, uh, the classroom edition, uh, you can you can have multiple students on different stations, and they can be running simulations um, and not being connected to each other. So they can do different things uh, on, on the well they are drilling uh, at the same time. Uh, but uh, also for doing multiple simulation at the same time, we have other products uh, which are very useful in the planning of, for the, uh, of the operation. The next question, how do you model stack pipe events? Yeah, uh, uh, the modeling of stuck pipe events is, uh, of course, first of all, we, we can adjust the friction in the well to make sure that uh, you will get uh, uh, realistic hook loads and frictions and, and torque and so on. Uh, but the stuck events are events that are triggered by the instructor to make sure that they are handled uh, or gives a, a good uh, training experience. So the events are, you can you can uh, trigger uh, stuck events that, that are uh, partially stuck or, or completely stuck uh, uh, according to what the training need is. This can also be coupled together to give pack-offs or, 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 or limited uh, flow uh, as well in the area to give a complete uh, learning session around the issues by packing off, for example. OK. Um, I will take the next question. What data is needed to run the simulator, and what is the typical output? Um, we are actually setting up the simulator with the well configuration, which is basically the information you have on the well you drill. Uh, this is uh, formation, the casing design, the, the BHA and tubulars, and also the, um, the fluid properties, uh, and actually also the, um, the rig surface lines to be able to uh, simulate accurately the surface pressures as well. 
And to answer uh, what is the typical output, the simulator gives a response um, as the actual uh, as the actual well. Uh, but the most important output is what you get by using the simulator and which is being ready for the operation and having control and using operational procedures on, on the simulator. Okay, the um, next question uh, with which clients did you hook up uh, to for MPD operations? Um, so on this one, we have been uh, doing training with uh, several clients um, like Equinor, uh, Talisman, and also uh, Shell. Uh, and we have hooked up to the MPD control systems with uh, Shulum uh Halliburton, and uh, also Weatherford. Okay, uh, we'll take the last uh, question. Uh, before the, the end of this webinar. So what model is used in the simulator and how accurate is the model? Well, um, in the system we are running hydraulic uh, and temperature model, which is uh, a dynamic transient model. And uh, we are using dynamic token drag uh, model with an ROP model in it. In the hydraulic model, we also have a reservoir model, which is used in well control. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, these models are actually part of the uh, digital twin, uh, which is used in all our products. And uh, they have been um, verified over the, the last uh, 20 years. Um, and it, they are actually used also in uh, operations uh, in real time uh, to do real time optimization and automatic monitoring uh, with diagnostics. All right, um, should we take this last question? Can you talk a bit more about how would you conduct a pre-drill UL session to replace uh, a DWAP? There are more activities than drilling, flat time activities such as casing running, logging, etc. How is that taken into account? Yeah. I can take that. Uh, when it comes to a pre-drill your well uh, session to replace the drill well on paper, uh, uh, we have some experience by doing that uh, with some customers. Uh, uh, and we haven't kind of replaced the drill well on paper session, but we have optimized them and made them more, uh, giving them some more value. Instead of just having a look on the equipment you are going to use and just have a brief look on the different sections, we have used the simulator in these sessions to show the problematic or the, the, the risks or, or what they are going to do uh, and with the potential outcome uh, or, and to make sure everybody understand what they're actually going to do and how it would look like. And of course, there are more active activities than drilling. Uh, so, uh, and the simulator is also used for casing running and cementing and so on. Uh, we have not used it for logging, uh, but uh, we, we also can do uh, coal tubing drilling, for example. So there are more, there's a lot of usage to, to, for the simulator. It's, it's more about what, what you actually need for. Very good. Um, so this ends our webinar. Thank you all for joining and for all uh, the good questions. Unfortunately, we didn't have the time to answer all, uh, all of them, but we will contact you for a follow-up. Uh, you can also contact me on uh, kl at edrilling.no, as you can see on the, on the slide, if you have any further questions. Thanks again, and uh, have a nice day. Thank you all. Bye. Bye-bye.